Jedi Outcast turned 20 this year. That's right, it's been 20 years since we first experienced this. This. And this. I wanted to go back and revisit this classic to see how well it's aged in the past two decades. But before we really dive into this game, we actually have to go back to the 90s. You see, Jedi Outcast was actually the third game in the series that started all the way back in 1995 with Kal Katarn's first adventure. Dark Forces was a great game, but it was a Doom clone with a Star Wars skin. Oh, and you could also look up and down, which was a really big deal at the time, apparently. Two years later came a sequel, Dark Forces 2, and the Developers remembered, oh yeah, this is a Star Wars game, make Kyle a Jedi. So now you could look up and down and swing a lightsaber around. They even titled this game Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, and the Jedi Knight part is in these huge letters just in case you didn't realize you could play as a Jedi in this game. However, Dark Forces 2 was still mainly an FPS with Jedi mechanics bolted on. That would change five years later, with the third game in the series, Jedi Outcast. This time, the devs really wanted you to understand that this was a Jedi game from the ground up. They even used the word Jedi twice in the title, meanwhile completely abandoning the Dark Forces name. But back in 2002, I didn't know any of that, I hadn't played the first two games. I remember staring at the box on the bus back home, imagining the amazing Jedi action I was about to experience. You see, the last Star Wars game I played before this was Phantom Menace for the PlayStation 1, and that game started you off chopping down battalions of battle droids while navigating straightforward levels. And I imagined Jedi Outcast would be more of that, but with better graphics. And then I booted up the game and saw this. Hold on, what is this supposed to be? Where are the lightsabers? Why am I in first person view? Before we go any further, let's talk about the game's story. It starts with Kyle and his lady friend Jan going to investigate an old Imperial outpost. Oh yeah, and by the way, Kyle's not a Jedi anymore. He's given that up. That's right, so I guess having the Jedi title in the game twice was just a coincidence. Maybe the game should have just been called Private Citizen 2 Private Outcast. All right, back to the game. Let's see, do we have friendly fire? Oh, no, no. I love Kyle's expression when he kills Jan. Oh shit, how am I gonna explain this? Now look, if you've played this game back in the day, then you already know that the first six or seven levels of this game are incredibly frustrating, and they really haven't aged well in these past two decades. You just have to keep backtracking through these dark corridors with no clear objective. Look, if you didn't use a walkthrough for this game, congratulations, you're a genius. And that's the thing, the game expects you to realize that you need to go around obscure objects or inside weird hidden environments to progress through the main level. And these pipes, these fucking pipes. <laughs> And if you're playing this on PC, then you better map the save and load keys to something convenient, because you're gonna be pressing them more than the trigger button in these early levels. So after five levels of trudging around dark corridors and engaging in awkward blaster fights with stormtroopers, Kyle and Jan are ambushed by the Sith dinosaur and his lady friend. Kyle is then defeated by Space Barney and Jan is definitely killed off screen. Driven by rage and vengeance, Kyle returns to the Valley of the Jedi to get his powers back. No religious imagery here whatsoever by the way. Move along. Move along. Kyle then visits Luke Skywalker at the Jedi Academy and asks for his lightsaber back. Now this part was really cool. It was the closest we had to actually visually seeing the continuation of the original Star Wars trilogy. But who needs to see Luke establishing his own Jedi Academy and training young Jedi on Yavin when you can have this? Kyle then undergoes some Jedi trials designed to remind the player how to use his force powers. The trial culminates in this elaborate Wily e. Coyote trap to get the lightsaber back. That's what I came for. Now how do I get it out of there? Jeez, why didn't Luke have to go through all this bullshit back on Dagobah? And speaking of Luke, he's back to monologue some more. We've tracked down the registry of Dasan's ship to a Rodian named Hello Darkness, my old friend. Okay, we're eight levels in, we finally have a lightsaber, this is where the game gets good, right? Nope. Welcome to Nar Shudder, a contender for the most annoying level in video game history. Seriously, if you think the Dathomir level in Fallen Order is annoying, please give this one a try. You see, this level mixes wide open platforming with tight corridors. And what's the problem with that, you may ask? Well, you see, the wide open areas are filled with sniper wankers, and the corridors are filled with grenade wankers. 
Oh god, these bastard snipers, you just don't see them coming. One second, you'll be in the middle of chopping down weak waves, and then, bam, you just get sniped and evaporated, arse first. And when you do finally manage to dodge a sniper bolt, you'll just end up falling into the abyss. <laughs> I've got to hand it to this game, there are a lot of different ways to die. <laughs> This game is often compared to The Force Unleashed, and I definitely think the latter had a stronger start. There's none of this having to trudge through corridors or wait for seven levels to get your lightsaber. The very first level, you play as Darth Vader and he causes absolute havoc. But back to Jedi Outcast, eventually you descend lower down into the garbage level, and there you meet Lando. You see, his ship has been impounded by the bad guys, and guess who has to sort that out? Better get going. Ugh. I don't know where to go, and these wankers are still throwing grenades at me. Okay, after three levels of bullshit, you finally get off Nar Shutter and fly to Bespin. Seriously, Lando, you couldn't find a better place to drop me off. <laughs> That's right, for some reason Lando decides to drop you off at the very bottom of the city, and it's up to you to make your way up. Alright, time for my very first lightsaber battle. Hold on, is that one of Queen Amidala's royal handmaidens? When it comes to lightsaber battles, Jedi Outcast has an interesting combat trick, which I like to call the Mario Jump. You see, jumping in your opponent's head knocks them down, just like it did in old platformers. At this point, I'd like to take a second to talk about cheats in this game. Now, if this is your first time playing Jedi Outcast, then by all means, play it the way it's been intended. But, if you're replaying it, I would actually recommend you try messing around with the cheats. Think of it as New Game Plus. Yes, having all of your Force powers maxed out straight away takes away from the game's progression, but it also allows you to do things like this. And there is one particular cheat that I always turn on as soon as I get the lightsaber, and that's the realistic saber combat cheat. It does what it says on the tin. Oh shit, sorry mate. Oh boo hoo, if Darth Maul survived without his legs, then you can survive without your body. Huh. Ah, shit. Come on, come back. Here, lightsaber. Bear with me, Stormtrooper. So, after dismembering everyone in Cloud City, Kyle reaches the upper level and takes on Barney's girlfriend. You're a pretty good lady, but can you survive the Mario jump? Works every time. The realistic lightsaber combat does create some unforeseen continuity errors. Look at this. One second, I've cut her head off, and now it's grown back. And surprise, surprise, she reveals that Jan is actually alive. Kyle then steals this space rubbish truck and sneaks onto Barney's evil base. This is where we get a quick cameo from Luke Skywalker. He turns up, decapitates a few stormtroopers, and then buggers off again. Good riddance. I'm perfectly capable of causing monumental damage on my own. See? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna need to use that control panel. Wait, what? What? I had to put him out of his misery, that was no way to live. Hey, what are you doing? Come back, come back! Huh. Hmm. Oh look, Luke's come back and he's taking on Barney. Oh no. Oh wait, he's fine. Kyle then sneaks onto the dinosaur star destroyer, the Doom Giver. Okay, where do I go now? Hey, come back, I need your card key. Is that Ed 209 from Robocop? So after making his way through the ship, Kyle finally finds Jan, and this is followed by some couple's teamwork. You get an escape pod ready and wait for me, this shouldn't take long. Oh, thank god she's gonna find an escape pod for a second, I thought we would have another patented Star Wars escort mission. And you, and you go there, uh -huh. hey, you right there buddy, need a hand? Ah, shit, never mind. Kyle then tries to deactivate the ship's shields, but this guy has a problem with it. A few moments later. The Doomgiver then loses gravitational drives and you float your way to the escape pod. Gentlemen, how are you? The ship explodes and Kyle and Jan escape to the swamps of Yavin. Ah, the swamp level. Nice to finally have a change of scenery. We've traded a maze of corridors for a maze of vegetation and rocks. 
covered in mist. Kyle eventually reaches the Jedi Temple and fights along these nice Jedi, who've only been given one line of dialogue each. Protect the Academy! Protect the Academy! It's okay, fellow Jedi, I'm here to save the day, and I'm definitely using light side powers. Okay, is it time to take on Barney yet? Mm, eventually, but first it's time for one last set of bullshit puzzles. And I really mean bullshit, like knowing that you can just walk through the wall, or realizing that you have to cut down this random, unmarked pipe that blends right into the environment. And if you somehow manage to guess that, your reward is finally taking on the dinosaur. Wait, what? You jump on my head? No, 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 no. I jump on your head. Damn it, this guy's played Mario too, hasn't he? And so, with another children's television icon dead, the Rebels celebrate. Now, I can't end this video without mentioning the multiplayer for Jedi Outcast. Back in the day, the multiplayer for this game was the definition of chaotic fun. It was just this flurry of saber clashes and force lightning. The official servers have been shut down a long time ago, but you can download a mod. I tried it, and there are a few people still playing, but of course nothing compared to what it was back in the day. And so, this is Jedi Outcast. I think the past 20 years have really amplified both the good and the bad aspects of the game. The early levels are as bad as they've ever been, especially when compared to modern level design with things like waypoints and actual clear objectives. But elements like lightsaber combat and the fun sandbox of force powers stand up against any modern Star Wars game. And I think it's these elements that ultimately overshadow the game's flaws. Because when I think back to Jedi Outcast, I remember a lot more of this... ...and a lot less of this. And I definitely try to forget this. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your memories of Jedi Outcast are in the comments, and remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.